In this video, I want to discuss real solutions versus imaginary solutions in reference to their graphs and where they show up on the graphs. Uh, like I mentioned in the previous video about imaginary numbers and solutions, up until now we've been factoring and finding what are called real solutions, meaning they hit the x-axis. x-axis. Now, imaginary solutions still exist, and that's what we're going to begin solving quadratic functions that will end up having imaginary solutions. These do not hit the x-axis. So that's why names like roots, zeros, and solutions exist, and x-intercepts, but only these real solutions can be considered x-intercepts because they cross the x-axis. These are not x-intercepts. Because although they still exist, they will not hit the x-axis. So let's look at an example of this, because this is something you'll need to consider moving forward in Algebra 2. The first example, x squared plus 4. And I'm actually going to, this is technically solving a quadratic function using the square root method, which you're going to learn about in just a, a few videos. Um, in order to get rid of the power of 2, I take the square root of it. Because again, they are inverses and they cancel each other out. Whatever I do to one side, and again, taking the square root, I would have noticed that I, the isolated quadratic term is by itself. And 4 jumps out at me as a perfect square. So potentially I could take the square root to solve it. So if I take the square root of one side, I have to do it to the other side. So the radical and the power cancel each other out, and I'm left with x equals, just like I talked about in the video before this, it has two solutions whenever I take the square root. The positive and negative version of the square root of 4 is 2. So x equals 2 and x equals negative 2. Now, if I plot this on the graph, x equals 2 and x equals negative 2. They actually show up on the graph because 2 is a real number, meaning it is a real solution, meaning it is indeed an x-intercept, both of them, positive 2 and negative 2. And I can finish drawing a rough sketch of this graph just like that. Now, let's look at... The next example, number two, the only difference is instead of x squared equals 4, it's now x squared equals negative 4. So if I solve this using the square root method, you'll hopefully notice that you're going to end up taking the square root of a negative number, which means that you're going to enter into the realm of imaginary numbers. So again, the radical and the power cancel each other out, so x equals the positive and negative version of 2, but again, you need to have i, because whenever you take the square root of a negative, you need to have i to tell me that you know that you're entering into the realm of imaginary numbers. And in this case, we won't necessarily graph imaginary solutions or draw the graphs of this, and potentially in module 4 a little bit. But in this case, what this graph looks at like is it starts here and goes up like that, meaning that the solutions still exist, they are just imaginary and they do not cross the x-axis, so they are not x-intercepts. They are still solutions, or roots, or zeros, but they are not x-intercepts. Only real solutions are x-intercepts that cross the x-axis.